dear students, you are welcome in this class. Uh, we continue with the topic uh, principles of crop production. I, I tried to discuss the crop, what is crop, what is production, what is crop production. You also see principle, what is principle, and what are different principles of crop production. So we start in brief, I will explain you different principles of crop production. So these are uh, important areas of crop production. These are important subject, subject of crop production, where you have certain guiding principles. We start, farmer start with the climate and weather. Climate and weather is, is number one. Farmer should know that what is the situation of climate and weather. For any operation, any agricultural operation, it starts with climate and weather. Even if you see certain books in agronomy, certain books in agronomy, they always start with the chapter climate and weather. They teach you what is the difference in climate and weather and how it is important for crop production. So any grower, any farmer should have sufficient knowledge of the climate and weather. Next comes the maintenance of soil health. When farmer thinks of uh, sowing or planting his crop, he just bothers about his soil health. So many times you must have seen farmers carrying manures, uh, particularly your farmyard manure and other manures. Sometimes green manuring is done to make soil health. So ne next thing in mind of a farmer is your soil health. And then at the same time, he also decides that what kind of crop should I grow? What should be my crop rotations? What are different crops that can be taken? So there are certain principles here also for crop rotations and diversification. At the same time, before sowing, he decides the varieties. What kind of varieties should I grow? Or which variety should I take? He arranges the seed then, seed of that particular variety. So there are definitely certain things in the mind of the farmer that while choosing a variety, while choosing a source, seed source. Then, of course, after getting the seed, he goes to the field and plant, plant the crop. Planting and sowing is same thing. Only difference is that planting covers sowing. So planting is big, big, big thing and sowing is small thing. Sowing is small thing in the sense that when you use the seed, when you use the seed, it is called sowing. And when you use any planting material, including seed, that is planting. Sometimes you can take potato tubers. Sometimes you can take the seedlings. So those things are planting. So there are certain principles or certain guidelines that or good agricultural practices that farmer should adopt while planting his crop or sowing his crop. And then even before planting, the question comes water or irrigation management. And sometimes after planting. You know, pre-sowing irrigation is given. So there are certain principles of water management or irrigation management. So I think you will study one course on principles and practices of water management. So that will teach you different principles of water management. Then similarly, you have a course on weed. What are the principles of weed management? Anybody can tell me what are the principles of weed management? What are the principles of weed management? General principles, general guidelines for weed management. You studied some courses in BSc agriculture or BSc level. Anybody? Can you tell me principles of disease management? Can anybody tell? Come forward. This is the time to shed your shyness. This is the time to shed your uh, shyness, just become outspoken. Hello, Arijit. Yes, sir. What are uh, principles of weed management or disease management or insect pest management? Sir, uh, principles of uh, disease or insect management mainly, sir, uh, eradication, protection, or uh, exclusion. Good. So why are you keeping mum if you know it? 
so <laughs> just just have confidence in you yourself and my uh, my mic is not uh, going well okay okay no problem so principles of weed management are uh, will be taught to you in the course what are different principles of weed management then comes your harvesting harvesting includes your threshing winnowing cleaning bagging so what should be the right time of harvesting what should be the right method of harvesting how to do it so there are certain basic principles related to harvesting similarly post harvest handling means after harvest what you are going to do you are going to go for drying of the products or transport storage and processing and finally market it sell it in the market and you also see the profitability all these aspects i tried to list them starting from 1 to 10 are part of the crop production are necessary items or necessary aspects of crop production and what are the fundamental guidelines related to it makes your principle of crop production now climate and weather climate and weather definitely your climate and weather they include different uh, variables different factors like your temperature rainfall humidity wind etc so they definitely influence the crop growth if i ask you how wind can influence the 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 crop growth can anybody tell me wind how wind can affect the crop growth you know about photosynthesis you know about respiration you know many other physiological things similarly how this uh, plant growth can be affected by wind sir it might affect pollination of several crops good very good uh, sir crop it will crop it is the transpiration exactly it influences transpiration uh, it, uh, so we need influence the relative humidity and thus it influences the transpiration and plant growth also very good so now you are able to understand ro role of a weather parameter suppose you have taken wind so if i try to define wind it is moving air moving air is called as wind so it has several influences on the plant growth through carbon dioxide availability through temperature management through uh, pollination through your uh, somebody was saying transpiration so it influences it influences plant growth so that is uh, you should know the reasoning behind the things so climate and weather and there are certain principles so it influences your growth development and yield so likewise you have temperature likewise you have uh, other uh, biotic and abiotic factors that affect the plant growth so by managing the effect of climate and weather on crops crop yields can be increased so if you manage the weather parameter well well in advance well in time then you can have better growth and if these climate and weather parameters or variables are managed inefficiently then you may lose the growth you may lose the yield if you cannot uh, uh, say if suddenly there is drop in the temperature drop in the temperature uh, in the air and your temperature has become 4 or say somewhat zero then what can be done to save the crop if you have knowledge if you have certain principles of overcoming these problems then you can have better growth so temperature moisture sunlight humidity wind climate vary number of uh, factors or climatic factors are there that influence the growth and having the knowledge of these weather parameters in advance farmer can manipulate the growth they can have uh, they can overcome the negatives or negative aspect of weather parameters suppose suddenly there is rise in temperature what farmer can do what are the principles to manage high temperature what are the principles to manage low temperature suddenly there is rainfall excess rainfall what farmer can do so if a farmer gets knowledge of these parameters in advance say one day two day three days before the event then uh, such uh, the ill effect of such 
weather parameters can be managed by the farmer. That is why you see forecast is made. Forecast is made through radio, through newspaper, through television. There are different media which circulate the weather parameter of tomorrow or for two days, for one week. And based upon that, farmers should do their operations. So therefore, climate and weather are very, very important aspects in crop production. Any question on climate and weather? So in fact, I am giving you just introductory part that how uh, these factors or these variable affect the crop production. Next is your soil health. Maintenance of soil health is necessary to get good production. And overall, in one line, what is soil health means it is combination of physical, chemical, and biological properties. Physical, chemical, and biological properties make your soil health. If I ask you, any student, what is difference in soil fertility and soil health? Can anyone tell me the difference in soil health and soil fertility? And also one term is there, soil quality. So soil quality, soil health, and soil fertility. These are the three terms. Any student can come forward and just have your idea. Are they same? Are they different? If they are different, how they are different? The soil fertility is the capacity of soil to uh, provide the, all the nutrients in the proper quantity. Exactly. And Good. In soil health, the not only the nutrient content, but also the physical and biological properties are uh, yeah, yeah. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. And how the soil soil health and soil quality are different? So soil quality is the properties of soil uh, under the certain circumstances to get the most. Uh... Anyway, so a good answer. Uh, you can remember that soil health and soil quality is same. Soil quality is mostly referred by the scientists, educated people who write papers, who do research, and soil health is used by general people, general people, popular press, media, etc., or even farmer. They, they say it's soil health, but scientifically it is called as soil quality. They are almost synonymous. And fertility, he has already told good definition of fertility, that it is the capacity of the soil to supply nutrients in adequate and balanced amounts. That is your soil fertility. Of course, soil fertility is affected by physical and chemical, physical and biological properties also. Soil health or soil quality is the, is the capacity of a soil to function normally under, an, under a particular ecosystem. Means a soil should perform its functions normally means normal function should be there. Soil should not perform abnormally. Abnormality of the functions will not be there. Then we can say it is called as soil health. Capacity of or, or uh, ability of a soil to perform its functions normal, its normal functions under a uh, fixed boundary or under a particular ecosystem. That is your soil health. Means there are four or five functions performed by the soil, if soil is able to perform those functions normally, then it is healthy soil. So can I ask you, what are the functions performed by the soil? Any student can come and tell me why soil is important to us. Why, what kind of functions uh, or role is being played by the soil? Why we need soil? Soil is a nutrient source and a water source for plants. Okay. It is a source, but what function it is doing? You know? It provides nutrients and water to the plant. And anchors the plant roots. That is, yeah. it is the habitat for the plant. Yeah, you are coming to the point now. Any, any other function? There are about six functions, I think. Six functions performed by the soil. 
you can see you can check recycling of nutrients good recycling of nutrients is another function see it buffers age and maintain the adequate temperature yeah this is minor function it can be related uh, uh, okay any other function so first important for the habitat for microbes yeah good it is habitat for microbes or other organism not just microbes it is habitat for all organism there are variety of organism living in soil in soil you can find rats in soil you can find earthworms so variety of organisms live in squirrels termite uh, so you have three different kind of organism in the soil so i think you you have fair idea of this subject functions performed by the soil so today it is your homework you should learn what are the six functions performed by the soil so mostly it is encourage encourage means give support to the plant plant needs supports because roots roots cannot grow in air means plant will not be kept erect so you need some support so it it provides support to the plant means the roots bind the soil particles and plant remains erect or plant grows it uh, somebody uh, talked about uh, recycling of nutrient this is important function detoxification of certain uh, materials toxic material also function of the soil and it provides support to the buildings your buildings are made made of soil even your bricks bricks you use in making buildings they are from soil so in making buildings and it also uh, acts as a filter filtration filtration is another function you know filters uh, if your nutrients whatever contents are there chemicals are there in the soil if they are drained into the ground water then your ground water will be full of chemicals but what soil is do do doing it is acting as a filter it does not allow everything to be drained into the ground water so please uh, read just you can type in your google functions of soil just you remember those functions so the number one principles of soil health management is prevent soil erosion what is soil erosion it is uh detachment remember the definition of soil erosion it is the detachment transport and accumulation of soil particles from one place to another place very simple definition detachment transport and deposition of soil particles from one place to another place means the particles of the soils are detached or removed from one part of the soil and they are carried away and they are deposited at some other place this is your soil erosion so the fundamental principle should be to prevent the erosion of the soil so that you can retain your fertility you can retain your microbes in the soil or organic matter or nutrients in the soil another is the basic thing is that we must enhance the organic matter levels in the soil through different uh, kind of farming like conservation agriculture is known to increase organic matter organic farming agroforestry practices and regenerative agriculture all these practices may enhance the organic matter content in the soil and we need to manage the fertility also uh, there are certain principles particularly balanced fertilization is important integrated nutrient management and adoption of crop rotations for management of soil fertility of course you have separate course for it and enhancing soil biodiversity so these are important aspects related to soil health and fertilization crop rotations are also important farmer need to adopt crop rotations there may be two kind of uh, uh, cropping systems one is your monoculture other is multiple culture or multiple cropping monoculture is growing one kind of crop year after year multiculture growing different kind of crops <laughs> Uh, over a fixed period of time so you find some difference in monoculture and multiculture so therefore uh, monoculture has not been found good so there are certain principles of crop rotation that you need to understand and uh, uh, diversification is also important crop diversification can be achieved by following crop rotations and agroforestry 
can help in diversification and inter or mixed cropping. So these are the three important strategies for crop diversification. So crop rotations are part of the crop diversification. So we can grow different kinds of crops or we can adopt crop rotations because crop rotations breaks the disease cycles, manages nutrient levels, uh, controls the weeds. You would surprise that how these crop rotations can control the weed. I give you one example. Rest you will study in the course on weed. Role of crop rotations in weed management. Role of crop ro rotations in insect pest and disease management. Role of crop rotations in nutrient management. So there are three different aspects related to crop rotations. Number one is nutrient management, they help. Number two, your insect pest disease management. And number three, weed management. So these are very, very important role. And number four, maintenance of biodiversity. So crop rotations have four very important role in fertility, in insect pest disease, in weed management. So, and they also improve the health of the soil, means your nutrient management. Improve soil structure, organic matter, increases biodiversity, reduces chemical inputs, reduces water requirement, or a overall, Adoption of crop rotation is a sustainable practice. Anybody interested to study more about crop rotation, you can contact me and you can get one uh, review paper published in Advances in Agronomy on crop rotations. So you can study yourself also these crop rotations. Now crop varieties. So farmers are required to select a particular variety. And there must be some reasons, some principles to adopt or to take a particular variety. So adaptation to the environment is number one, that variety should be suitable for one particular location. Therefore, as many of the students understand that varieties are recommended state-wise, zone-wise, even soil-wise also. In case of wheat, you can have varieties recommended for different zones, wheat growing zones of the country. But if you see that those varieties are recommended for different uh, variability also. Suppose you have irrigated condition, you have different varieties. You have rain fed conditions, you have different varieties. You have limited water availability, you have different varieties. So varieties also, uh, the choice of variety also depends upon the irrigation. Sometimes it also uh, depends upon the duration. If you want shorter duration variety, you have shorter duration, longer duration, medium duration variety. Uh, similarly, if even for soil conditions, like you can have medium fertility, high fertility, or low fertility. In case of wheat, you will find classification of varieties based upon the soil fertility, low fertility, high fertility, medium fertility. So there are many variables in making the decisions on varieties. So adapt, adaptation to the particular environment, resistant to biotic and abiotic stresses. Farmers are also interested to choose the varieties which are tolerant to biotic stresses or abiotic stresses. So that is also important principle in, in choosing the variety. Uh, for example, I give you one example. Uh, sometimes one particular variety rules for example, these days, uh, some of the people, uh, some of the students who are from, say, Uttar Pradesh or um, Haryana or sugar cane growing areas, okay, sugar uh, cane grown, uh, grown areas, one particular variety, say, uh, COS 238, uh, yeah, 238, this variety had more than 90% area in sugarcane for last at least 15 20 years can you imagine only single variety similar in wheat sd2329 2967 sd2967 2967 for last 10 15 years this variety has more than 60 percent area in indogangetic plains so you can see uh, one particular variety has ruled but suddenly some diseases have come in these varieties. SD2967 is suffering from yellow rust and this uh, COS238 is suffering from 
red rot of sugarcane. So two important diseases have appeared in these two different crops. So now farmers are switching to some other varieties, maybe good variety, but now these varieties are suffering from disease. So farmers have switched over their variety. So resistance to biotic and abiotic stress is also important for farmers in choosing the variety. Of course, yield potential. Every farmer would like varieties which give you more yield uh, and, and which are uh, re resistant to biotic and abiotic stresses. Abiotic stress can be your soil salinity, pH, or soil conditions, or temperature stresses, etc. Quality characteristics are also important. Sometimes farmers wants, wants good quality variety. Quality uh, may vary with individual to individual, crop to crop, but in general, they want flavor, texture, color, and nutritional value. These days, many students must be knowing that now uh, the system is releasing biofortified varieties, which are rich in micronutrients or some other nutrients. So sometimes farmers may choose your quality characteristics. Similarly, basmati rice is famous for quality. So some farmers may choose basmati variety. So quality is also important. Market demand. In, in selection of crow varieties, market demand is also important. For example, in sugarcane, you get two kinds of variety. One contains more sugar. Percentage of sugar is more. In others, comparatively less. But what happens is the variety which are having more sugar are early maturing also. It is quite interesting. And farmers are paid more money. More money for early maturing varieties which, are, which contain more sugar. So they have demand. So farmers need to look into the demand also, demand of the variety. Availability of seed. Of course, whatever variety farmer decides, decides to choose, that the, the sufficient should, seed should also be available. So based upon availability of the seed. Now see the seed selection. You have chosen the variety, so you will take the seed of that particular variety. But seeds should be good. Seeds should be, or variety should be tolerant to insect pest disease already discussed. Uh, high seed quality is important. Once you have chosen the variety, this should be genetically pure, physically pure, good viability, good germination, good vigor. And good soil health means it should be free from insect pest and diseases. And then there are certain principles related to seed treatment. Seed treatment is very low monetary input. It does not involve much money, but have very significant impact on the plant growth and yield. Next comes the principles of planting and sowing. So in this case, there are certain principles you need to test the moisture of the soil, time of sowing, the number of depth of sowing, etc. So placing the seeds, seedlings, or propagules into the soil at appropriate depth and spacing. So there are certain principles of depth and spacing. What should be the optimum depth? If you put the seed too deep, it may, it may not germinate. If you put the seed too shallow, it may not germinate. So depth of sowing uh, will be decided by the kind of crop. Normally smaller seeds are planted at a shallow depth, like your tobacco seed, your mustard seed, etc. They are planted at shallower depth. And seeds which are bold, like chickpea, they are, these kind of seeds are planted deeper, little deeper, say 10 centimeters. But in case of lentil or some small seeded, uh, this uh, mustard, you have just two centimeter, three centimeter. In rice also, two, three centimeter. So depth is also important. There are principles, similarly spacing. Spacing will be decided by, decided by the kind of crop, kind of variety, the sowing time, planting time, so many principles are there. Suppose you have two, two cases. One is timely planting, other is late planting. In which case you will use more seed. One is timely planting, other is late planting. Late planting. Late planting. So now, now I think you understand what, what exactly I mean principles. So uh, these uh, principles are important. So now you have a principle that late planting use more seed, uh, timely planting you use normal seed. So similarly, you have some principles of land preparation, principles of tillage. You have different methods, broadcast sowing, line sowing. 
you can uh, use animal power for sowing purposes or machines. You can have different methods of planting or sowing on beds or flat sowing. So all these methods of planting related things have certain principles. Time of planting can be decided by climate, variety, soil, desirable harvest date, etc. Seed rate is also important. It is to be decided by, I can discuss in detail also, but I understand that you, you, you also uh, know something about these, like seed rate is decided by crop variety, soil spacing, time of planting, etc. Then water and irrigation management. In water and irrigation management, number one is water conservation. Like in soil health management, you have soil conservation as number one priority. Here also, whatever water you have in soil or you apply from outside, that needs to be conserved in the soil. So water conservation is important. You can adopt strategies like dry, drip irrigation, mulching can be practiced in rainwater harvesting. Efficient use, whatever water is supplied should be efficiently used in right amounts, right time, and avoiding the over irrigation. Soil moisture monitoring is also important to decide the time of irrigation. Crow water requirement, we should know the crow water requirement for every crop. What is the water requirement of uh, rice and wheat crops? Anyone? Water requirement of rice. No. So for rice, it is around uh, 1500 millimeters, and for wheat, it is around 650 millimeters. For wheat, you, for rice, it is perfectly okay. For rice, uh, it is, uh, of course, very long range is there for rice, but you, you are uh, uh, approximately right for rice. But for wheat also, you need more irrigation. It is not seven or 100 millimeter or something like, it should be more. You can check it. Okay. Please recheck it. But for rice, you are correct. So uh, you can see the, uh, you can see that this is also important to know the water requirement and it is uh, needed to supply the quantity of water. Irrigation scheduling, you know, time, depth and method. Some principles are there for scheduling of irrigation also. And then drainage and water quality is also important. Weed, insect, pest and disease management, you will study in detail in other courses. But there are normally three important principles, prevention, eradication and control. So prevention includes your avoidance, exclusion. Eradication is complete removal and control is your protection. Somebody was are saying protection also. So different methods are there, different principles are there. Then comes your harvesting. Harvesting doesn't mean just harvesting. It also includes threshing, winnowing, cleaning, and bagging. They are related operations. So harvesting, uh, so, you know, after harvesting, you go for, uh, Threshing, winnowing, cleaning, and bagging. So depending on the position of economic part in plant, you can harvest the crop by cutting, cutting through sickles or some machines, digging, you know, digging, picking, laying, and gathering. So there are different methods of or different kind of harvesting procedures depending upon the kind of crop. Then principles are time and method of harvesting. Time is also important when the crop is mature, then only you harvest. Certain crops are harvested immature, like fodder crops. Fodder crops are yeah. harvested immature. And uh, hello. Hello, please switch off your mic. Uh, then winnowing, winnowing is your threshing. Threshing can be done manually. Sometimes uh, farmers uh, do not use machines. They have different ways for threshing of the crop. And, and also some machines or threshers are available. Then comes the cleaning of winnowing and then bagging. You put the material into the bags. Then marketing and profitability is also important. Then farmers need to market. They need to sell their products so that they get more and more profit. So overall, adoption of principles of crop production result in, if you follow the principles, adopt the principles, definitely you will have better growth of the crop, getting good crop yields, 
better growth will result in good crop yield, higher production, maximize the profit. Overall, because the, the, there will be best use of inputs, whatever resources are available with the farmer, he will make efficient use of all those inputs or resources by following principles, by following principles or guidelines starting from climate and weather up to the marketing. So maximizing the profit, preserving the soil and environment. If a farmer understands and uses these principles judiciously and carefully, then he can preserve the soil and there will be least damage to the environment. And finally, you can see that it will also result in enhance above and below ground biodiversity. So this is why we need to adopt the principles of crop production. And sometimes a student may also see the practices of crop production. One is aspect is principles of crop production. Other is practices of crop production. So actually, whatever we have studied, we have studied uh, principles of crop and weather, principles of planting, principles of weed management, and so on. When actually we do it, when actually we do these things or activities, it becomes your practice. So like crop selection, addition of manure, pre-sowing, irrigation, feed preparation, leveling, sowing, planting, herbicide application, all these activities on a farm are practices, practices of crop production. So uh, many times you will find books where uh, you will find principles and practices of agronomy. So more, there is hardly any, any difference. You take any activity, for that activity, you have certain guiding principles and you will do this activity. When you do it, it is a practice. When you take care or when you uh, follow certain guidelines, then it becomes principle. So activity will be same, but for same activity, you will have principles and you will implement this activity, then that it will become a practice. So now uh, I, I can invite your questions, if any questions you have uh, now. So dear students, you are welcome in this class. The topic of this lecture is factors affecting plant growth and crop growth analysis. I will not cover the crop growth analysis. This is wrongly mentioned here. It will be covered by Dr. Rathor or some other uh, colleague. Now, learning objective of this lecture are the, to explain the meaning of plant growth and factor affecting it. What is plant growth? What do we mean by plant growth? And to understand the influence of different factors on plant growth. There are a number of factors that will affect the growth of the plants or crops. Uh, and, uh, and, and we will see that how these factors will affect the growth. And describe and understand various growth analysis indices. This will not be covered. Now, some uh, glossary. Base temperature is important. It is the lowest temperature threshold below which development ceases. Means there will not be photosynthesis at all. So that is your base temperature. Biotic factors, an aspect of the environment related to organisms or their interaction that will influence the growth of the crops. Diversity, the number or variety of species in a location. Location can be your water, location can be soil, location can be uh, your air, anywhere. So diversity is the number or variety of species in a location community, ecosystem, or agroecosystem, or the degree of heterogeneity of the biotic components of an ecosystem or agroecosystem. That is your diversity. The number and variety of organism that inhabited a particular environment is your biodiversity, is your diversity or biodiversity. Genotype environment interactions, relative changes in genotype performance when grown under different environments. One particular, um, this uh, genotype will behave differently in different environments. Then we can say that it is having genotype environment interaction. 
if it grows uni uniformly across all, all the environments, then it is not interaction. It is not significant interaction. Take the case of, I give you a very classical example of Amrapali. Amrapali is a mango variety. If it is grown in Delhi or say Uttar Pradesh, then it gives you smaller sized fruits, smaller sized fruits. If you grow it in Odisha or perhaps in Bengal, then it gives you very big sized fruits. So it is difficult to uh, uh, really understand, but some climatic uh, or environment effects are there. Uh, take the case of uh, this uh, kinno. Do you know kinno? What is English name of kinno? Kinno, you know, is it English name or? Mandarin, sir. Huh? Mandarin. Okay. Mandarin, sir. So I think most of you must have eaten it or seen it in the market. So it was developed in USA by some scientists. And then uh, it was very, very bitter, very bitter taste in USA. What he did, he, he was really, it was his labor of many, many years. He worked it and developed this hybrid. And then the, the taste was not good in USA. What he did, he took his plants to different countries, to different parts of the world. And he found that in some places it was bitter, in other places it was sour, in some places it was sweet. In some, place, in some places, it was a mix of sourness and sweetness. So, means the, the behavior, the outcome was different in different climates. So, now it is grown widely in India, particularly in uh, Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan. It has found some places. So, this is all genotype into environment interaction, where a particular genotype is behaving differently. Now, phenology, a study of the sequence of developmental stages of a plant and how it relates to climate. The, uh, I'll discuss it again sometimes later, phenology. Photoperiod sensitivity, requirement for a minimum or maximum day length for reproductive phase induction. Phylochrome, rate of appearance of leaves on a shoot. How many leaves per day emerge? Uh, plant veggie, uh, vegetative and reproductive plasticity of the plants, ability of an individual plant within a crop to modify the number of vegetative and or reproductive structures. Means it has flexibility depending on the amount of available resources. Profile, a plant structure resembling a leaf as a bracteole or consisting of a modified or rudimentary leaf. Now we straightway come to the growth. So many of you might be knowing that what is growth? So a permanent and irreversible change in size and volume of a living structure with an accompanied increase in dry weight. So this is very standard definition of growth. You may like to remember it. What is growth? A permanent and irreversible change in size and volume of a living structure with an accompanied increase in dry weight. That is typical and most adapted definition of the growth. So you can see uh, it covers uh, all, almost all the aspects. It describes irreversible changes with time, which are mainly in size. However, this may be measured, often in form. Means the size can be measured in different forms and occasionally in number. Now, you, you see how growth happens, how growth happens in plants' life cycle. So typical life cycle of an annual seed-bearing plant showing growth and development processes. So this is just a, a general example. It does not, uh, it, 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 uh, this kind of trend will not be there in every plant. It is just for a seed-bearing plant. For example, the things start with the pollination self or cross pollination, whatever is there, then you know the result of pollination is fertilization. And fertilization uh, gives you zygote. So zygote is fertilized egg to an, and then zygote will be uh, covered in a seed. Ultimately, you will have a seed, and this zygote will convert into embryo. 
embryo and it will be there placed in the seed. So zygote goes to the seed. This is also growth. And then from seed, seed will germinate. So here you see some factors have come into the picture. Your moisture, oxygen, temperature, that will affect the germination, germination of the seed. And then after germination, the plant will develop into the seedling. And then seedling will give rise to a plant and plant will have flowering and fruiting then. So these are all growth. Growth is happening from zygote up to, up to the flowering and fruiting in plant. And then it will give you seed. So from seed to seed, you can see. So at all the stages, almost all the stages of plant growth, it is influenced by several factors. So you can see from seed to germination, moisture, temperature, oxygen, and then seedling, it is a vegetative start, a stage start. From seedling, the vegetative stage is start. It was germination was one stage, next is seedling stage. And from this stage, the, the major growth happens from seedling to the plant. So this is your vegetative growth time. And here what happens, number of factors affect uh, the growth of the plant, the speed of growth. And what happens here from seedling to plant, increase in height, this is growth. Increase in number of leaves, this is growth. Some tilling crops are there. All crops are not tilling crops, but some are tilling crops. So in those crops, you will see tillers, but in other crops, you will see branching. Branching, number of branches will increase. So, and similarly, roots, root growth will also increase. And overall, the dry matter production will increase in the plant. And then after a certain, after completion of the vegetative phase in determinate kind of plants, the plant will start flowering. And in case of uh, this indeterminate kind of plants, the flowering and vegetative growth can go together. So here formation of flowers, fruits and seeds happen. That is, you can call it reproductive growth. So these are different phases of the growth of the plant. Germination phase, vegetative phase and reproductive phase. And then you can have maturity phase also. So these are phenological phases. Like in youth, uh, like in human beings, you have in the beginning, you were a child. Then after uh, you were a baby, child, and then you have become adolescent, then youth, then adult. So these are all phases, all kind of phenology. And each phase will have different stages. Now, stages of cellular growth. This is just an example, how growth happens at cell level. So the growth of an organ or individual organism occurs in three stages. So what is happening in growth? How the plant is getting more dry matter accumulation? Because cells, cells are multiplying. Cells make up tissues, tissues make up organ and so on. You know this. So therefore the cell division, cell enlargement and cell differentiation. These three things result in growth. Cell division, cells increase by mitosis. Cell enlargement, size of individual cell increases after cell division and then cell differentiation. The structure of the cells change to perform specific functions. The similar type of cells having same functions form a group. Uh, in bacteria and algae, entire body grows. Higher plants, growth occurs in cell or growing regions. Shoot apex, root tip. These are the growing regions and close in the lateral uh, and close to the lateral sides of stem. They increase in size also or diameter also where you have lateral sides for stem and root. Growth at tips leads to elongation of the body part and growth at lateral side, sideways leads to the increased thickness of stem or root. So you can see two kind of growth is there. Now types of growth, determinate growth habit and indeterminate growth habit. So in determinate growth habits, your plant starts growing and first is finishes the vegetative growth and then the reproductive stage comes. So there is distinct variation in vegetative and reproductive growth. However, in indeterminate growth habit, the plant will start growing vegetative, start uh, vegetative growth 
but quickly quickly it will also start the reproductive stages or growth and they will go hand in hand they will go simultaneously so this is the difference in determinate growth and indeterminate growth examples are rice wheat maize for determinate and cowpea, moon bean, etc., for inde indeterminate growth habit. Now, growth curve. I think I will start tomorrow about the growth curve. I stop here. So, do you have any question? Uh, uh, Suvanjan, do you have any question or Puchappa? No, sir. A anything no, sir. from the principles of crop? Uh, production or growth, anything you want to ask? Let me check, check, take a picture of the attendance, then you can disperse. There are two screens. So at the end of every day, at the end of the lecture, I would take your attendance so that I can show evidence to your dean that the students were participating. Wait a moment. I'm going to screen two. So thank you very much, dear students. Have a nice day. Uh, wish you good luck. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thank, thank you. you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you.